Today we are discussing Runway Gen 3 and more specifically what the latest in AI video says about the larger state of AI development. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. There has been a ton of activity over the last few weeks in the AI video space, and I want to use this episode as a way to not only catch you up on what's been happening there, but also to use it as a way to ground our sense of where we are in AI development more broadly. And for that, I think we have to go back to about 15 months ago. You may remember in late March of last year, when AI-generated videos of Will Smith eating spaghetti first started hitting the internet. This was right around the time of the six-month pause letter, it was right as the AI safety narrative was starting to take hold in mainstream media, and it was certainly still in a period where people were being dismissive of AI because of the weirdness in its generations, the weird extra fingers, strange extraneous body parts happening with no apparent connection to anything else going on, and these videos were sort of exhibit A and all that. They were at once disturbing and also weirdly compelling, and people just watched them on repeat. However, for our purposes, they matter much more as a way marker of where things were, given the advances we've seen since then. At the end of last year, our friends over at Latent Space published something that they called the Four Wars of the AI Stack. These were basically the big sets of questions they saw as being unanswered, and for which the answers had a major impact on how the AI field was likely to develop. One of those wars was what they called the Multimodality War. Specialist models versus everything models. So on the one hand, you had specialist models, text-to-image startups like Midjourney, text-to-audio startups, etc., versus the everything models that companies like OpenAI and Google DeepMind were pursuing. And at the time that this came out and we were first talking about it on this show, I think for as advanced as the everything models were, there was still a sense that those specialist models really could remain differentiated. Specifically, I think a lot of people felt that Midjourney was still ahead, for example, of OpenAI's Dolly 3, even if Dolly 3 had made some advances, like being better with text. But then in February, OpenAI released the first generations with its video model called Sora. Just less than a year from when we saw those Will Smith eating spaghetti examples, we got these hyper photorealistic generations that absolutely blew people away. There was the famous woman walking through a Tokyo street, woolly mammoths running through snow, a wide panning shot of a lighthouse on what looks like the California coast. And then there were examples like the pirate ship swirling around in what appears to be a cup of coffee, which showed just how much better this model seemed to understand physics. For many people, the release of Sora was a moment that absolutely reignited our sense of the unfettered possibilities of AI generation. The problem was that Sora hasn't really been widely available. Sure, OpenAI has done a lot of sharing of Sora with very select artist creators, and they've been clearly making a pitch towards Hollywood and the traditional film and entertainment industry, but it hasn't been available broadly to the public. The same is true for Google VO, which was their answer to Sora shown off a couple months later, which also was limited in its distribution. So the situation we've been in for the last couple months is one in which the state of the art when it comes to video generation has not been widely available. The last few weeks, though, have seen some major moves in that area. Fast forward to yesterday, Monday, and Runway became the third AI video company in a matter of three weeks to release their latest model. Runway's was called Gen 3 Alpha. The announcement post on Twitter reads, Gen 3 Alpha can create highly detailed video with complex scene changes, a wide range of cinematic choices, and detailed art directions. Runway continues, Gen 3 Alpha is the first of an upcoming series of models trained by Runway on a new infrastructure built for large-scale multimodal training and represents a significant step towards our goal of building general world models. Gen 3 Alpha was trained on both videos and images and powers Runway's text-to-video, image-to-video, and text-to-image tools. Apparently, Runway has also been collaborating with entertainment companies, thinking about the obvious applications of this technology. And while it wasn't available immediately upon announcement, they said that it would be rolling out to everyone over the coming days. The early impressions of Gen 3 definitely felt that it represented a significant realism upgrade. And in addition to the fidelity of the actual generations, they also promised more fine-grained control. The Runway website reads, Gen 3 Alpha has been trained with highly descriptive, temporally dense captions, enabling imaginative transitions and precise keyframing of elements in the scene. Almost immediately, people started doing their threads of the most impressive generations, although initially many of them did come from the Runway team itself. And there were some interesting notes as well. While a lot of folks were focused on the increase in the realism enabled by the new model, others like Habitualization on Twitter, who does support at Runway, tweeted a very weird stylized video 
and said, hyperrealism is sick, but I am unfortunately someone who will die on the hill of avant-garde experimentalism and thus spent a while making surreal, grainy, noisy craziness in Runway's new Gen 3 model to great success. And then shared a set of five examples of these distinctly non-realistic generations. Tom's guide went a little bit farther in explaining what Runway means when it says that its end goal is general world models. They describe them as, quote, an AI system that can build an internal representation of an environment and use it to simulate events inside that environment. Tom's Guide also noted that, quote, each video is about 10 seconds long, which is about twice as long as a Luma default and of a similar length to Sora videos. It is also nearly three times the length of the current Runway Gen 2 videos. Andrew Curran also mentioned Luma, saying Luma has started the avalanche. What he means is that last week, Luma Labs absolutely dominated the AI Twitter conversation with their release of Dream Machine. Dream Machine came out last week, and while it wasn't nearly on the same level for most as the realism in something like Sora, the fact that it was widely available made all the difference in the world. One of the first use cases that popped off online was people animating classic memes. Even Andre Carpathy, formerly of OpenAI and Tesla, said, wow, the new model from Luma Labs extending images into videos is really something else. I understood intuitively that this would become possible very soon, but it's still something else to see it and think through future iterations of. It should be noted, though, that really when it comes to what started this flood, it wasn't Luma Labs, but was actually from Chinese company Kwai. Kwai is basically a TikTok competitor with 400 million plus daily users. And when Kling was released, it was immediately available right then and there. Kling was good enough that some folks like Didi at Menlo Ventures said China might be surpassing the US at AI. Now, of course, one of the big questions for folks with all this is whether OpenAI would actually respond and get Sora out to the public. Matt Wolf writes, Maybe we'll see Sora soon amongst all this competition popping up. When we do, will people still be excited by it? Then again, as Dogen Euro writes, the leap of Sora was so big that it feels like nothing surprises me anymore. Anyone else feel this way? AI and design, however, responded the surprise lies with the fact that while OpenAI has been dicking around pandering to Hollywood, other players have achieved comparable quality and are making it available to the public in four months. That's the pleasant surprise. It's clear that the race is on. In fact, even as Runway Gen 3 was announcing itself, Luma Labs was talking about what was coming next. They tweeted coming soon to Dream Machine, powerful editability and intuitive controls. They shared a video of a new editing suite that allows for much more fine-grained precision editing when it comes to these video generations, which is something that hasn't been widely available yet. They also released something called Extend Video, which they said is aware of what's happening in your video and extends it in a consistent way to follow instructions. It's clear that as many advantages as the big companies have, the smaller startups in this space have some advantages as well. Dan Kay, formerly of Google, responded to someone who was tweeting about Luma, Now you know why I left Google to join Luma. I was in the team that developed VO early on, but knew it would never be shipped to the masses for quite a long time, same as Sora. Not until a company like Luma forces their hand, that is. For me, it's hard to look back 15 months ago at Will Smith eating spaghetti to see this variety of models that have come to fruition in the last three weeks and take seriously any of these claims that have started to float around that AI is somehow plateauing or slowing down. The speed of evolution is unbelievable and is going to come with changes that we can't even imagine yet. Investor Jared Hecht writes, given the pace at which Luma, Sora, and Kling are emerging and improving, this may be the final generation of the global movie star. There is a future where Hollywood quality film can be created by anyone with an idea, computer, and internet connection. Who knows how this will all go down, but right now, it is an absolutely flowering moment for AI video generation, and that's pretty cool to see. Quick shout out if you're interested in learning more about how to use these tools. Even if you haven't signed up for Super Intelligent yet at bsuper.ai, we did just release one of our Luma tutorials for free on our YouTube channel. You can find that at youtube.com slash at bsuperai. I'll also include a link in the show notes. But for now, that is going to do it for this AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.